Hello everybody, we are moving to Okinawa and this is part one of our long journey and experience in Okinawa. A little bit of background be behind our family is my husband and I are both prior Air Force um, active duty. I served 12 years and my husband retired after 21 and a half. We have both been overseas as active duty separately, um, but we have never been overseas as civilians. My husband is now a GS employee, which is a government employee um, currently with the military. And one of the benefits of that is that we can apply and try to go overseas, which we've been applying for many years. And we finally got an assignment to Okinawa and we'll be leaving on the 3rd of August, which is less than a month. It's like 20 some days away. Um, but through my experience of trying to learn what we need to do, it's been pretty rough <laughs> as active duty members. It's pretty spelled out for you um, where you, what you need to do and where you need to go. As civilians, it's not very clear cut. A lot of it is based on hoping that you know what you're doing, which in this case, we don't 100% know. Um, a lot of things are similar with active duty, but there's a lot of things that are not, um, in particular the process of getting the assignments. Um, because I didn't see a lot of research or information out there uh, for us, I wanted to do this video so then I could help somebody else that um, is in the process of trying to get an assignment overseas or um, wants to learn some more about it. Um, so I have my notes, so bear with me. First thing first, um, whether you're a government employee right now or you're wanting to be, the first thing you need to do is apply for the jobs. And how you do that is you go to USA Jobs. You go through USA Jobs, you search for the field that you work in, and you put your application in, your resumes, you fill out all the forms, and you apply for the job. Now, what happens is there's a cutoff date that you have to apply by. After that date, all the applications or resume will go through a system and will be filtered through, and it's usually based on keywords that you have in your resume and application. Um, and then once it's filtered through there, then um, a shortened list will go to the hiring official. Um, once it's at the hiring official, you know, they could have anywhere between 10 to 30 different applicants, but the hiring official will narrow down the search. And there are certain priorities based on disabilities. If you're a spouse of a military member that was forced to move, if um, you have any kind of VA disabilities. There's different things. You get different um, priorities on that, but I'm not going into all that on this video. Um, but that does, there are certain things that will give you priority. So the hiring official will narrow down their selection um, to whatever they desire. Um, and they can either direct select the person, um, I'm sorry, back it off. <laughs> direct select something different, bad, wrong terminology. What they can do is they can look at the files and select from that information, or they can interview. If they select, if they narrow it down to three people, they have to, in the interview one, they have to interview all three. Now, interview can be done in person, but most mostly they're done over the phone. Um, just because the proximity, everybody's in a different place. The military is not going to pay for you to go in person to do a job interview. So they do an interview, and a lot of times there will be three people on the panel. So there will be three people on the other end of the phone from you, and they will all be asking you questions. They usually have some kind of score sheet. They tally it up at the end, and they select the person. Um, and then what they do is they go into the system, and they put in their top three selects um, in, in order and then they submit it. And then that goes to the civilian personnel people. I don't know all the terminology, the civilian terminology, but it goes to the civilian personnel. They notify the selectee that they've been picked. And that could take a while. I think for our case, it took two weeks, I think, um, to get to, to know if we were selected or not. And what they give you is they give you a tentative offer. So nothing's written in stone. They tell you not to sell anything or do anything. And then once you you have usually 48 hours to reply, um, you accept the offer, then they will notify the non-selectees that they were not selected. Um, now, 
so you go into the system, you, you go in and you put in your, your, your acceptance. Then they're going to send you a buttload of forms. And I mean a buttload of forms. Um, my husband John was not anticipating all the forms that he was going to fill out. And the information that they request is, is a lot, like kind of personal stuff. But um, they ask it. So then he submitted all the documents right away. Um, he um, Some jobs require medical reviews. Thank goodness ours did not, because that would have delayed it even more. Um, ours did require um, my husband to have a, a security clearance. Um, his is not, was not current, but he's had several clearances before. So um, he did put in the paperwork and that went really fast. Um, let's see, um, how long did it take us? It took, uh, it took us two weeks after the tentative offer to get a final offer. From that date that you get the final offer, it can give you anywhere between 30 and 45 days to get there. Um, usually 30 if you don't have family, usually 45 if you have family. For us, from the date we got the final, it was 38 days, and 30, we had 38 days to get there. So usually active duty, you have like six months, you know, from the time you know. So this is rather quick. Um, and if you need a passport, which here's a note, we had we had personal passports. Um, so they we were told not to get official passports, the government no fee passports until after we get there, um, because that could slow the process up. Um, plus, we have to turn in our passports to get those and then we would be stuck um, if we didn't get them back in time. So um, if you're considering moving overseas, most places um, they will allow you to go with your personal passport and then you have to get your no fee once you get there within the first um, 90 days um, obviously all that's a little different depending on the situation but i would maybe highly encourage you to get a tour passport if you're seriously considering it because um, with civilians you don't have much time um, and that was a big factor thank goodness we had a passport um, so then after that happened, after you get your final information, you get a sponsor, or hopefully get a sponsor, and then that person will kind of help guide you, get you your um, get you your mailing address. It works just like active duty sponsors do. Um, but if you don't know, they help you um, get transportation, either pick you up or arrange transportation when you arrive at the airport, kind of help you get a hotel while you're there, kind of, be that person to answer the questions um, that you have. Unfortunately, um, with the time difference for us, it's, it's been rather difficult, plus the holidays, plus there's been typhoon, um, so offices have been closed over there. Um, so a lot of things we're just we're still waiting to find out about. Um, we do have, we just got a forwarding address. We um, did get our flights here, and um, we're going commercial. Um, that's another thing. If um, active duty, most of the time you're going to take the rotator, which is a government contracted airline. Um, you know, it's it's okay. You know, it's it's a normal airline, but the quality is usually not quite as good um, in my experience. Um, but um, they only go out so many times a week, and in our situation. We had to go out on the third. There's a specific day that we have to be there, and um, with the military, you, you have more of a range. You usually have within reporting later than a certain date, which is usually within you can report within that month. Uh, for civilians, we have a specific date that we need to be there. Um, if we were left, we wanted to have left the day before. Um, there was a rotator, but it was full anyway, and the next one was after when we needed to be there. So for us, it worked out good. I hope I let you know how that how that commercial flight goes. Um, let's see where am I what was I saying here? Let me get back on track. Okay, so then we have a hotel for here, um, and everything I'm telling you is the standard rule. But keep in mind there are fluctuations, and not everything is set in stone. So how it works is we have ten days in a hotel here, and then once we get there, because we're going overseas, we have ninety day up to ninety days, and that gives us time to look for a house. So we have 10 days here. Um, that gets you like out of your house so you can um, get your house so goods picked up and and stuff and have a place to, to stay and survive. 
Um, and so the government pays for the hotel for that. Um, usually you see at TLF, which is temp temporary living um, facilities or lodging facilities. Sorry, temporary lodging facilities, I think. Now I'm questioning myself. Anyway, it's like a hotel, but it's on base. So um, the TLF here is Candlewood, um, but they're full. So we went to a Candlewood off base. Um, so they have like a little kitchenette and stuff like that, um, which isn't too bad. And then it looks like uh, we were really trying for a beach hotel, but it is so expensive to get a hotel in Okinawa right by the bases. And it's prime it's PCS season and in the summer. There was a week where each night, and this is not like a like a high-end hotel, at $900 a night for a hotel. Needless to say, the government doesn't pay us that much a month. So um, it looks like we are going to be TLF on base, which on thought of it isn't too bad. We'll be close to things. There is um, beaches on the base. Um, there's transportation. And the TLF is, um, for us, would be a room. Um, and then it has like a, a separate room with a door, a living area, and then a full kitchen is fully stocked for us, meaning dishes, not food, um, a full size fridge and oven and, and all that. So it's not too bad. I mean, it's not like the, the nicest or the newest kind of things, but it has everything that you need plus some um, to get by until you get your house. Um, let's see. Okay, so then you also arrange your household goods to pick up. They give you um, what's called unaccompanied baggage, and that is things that you need right away, like within a month or two. And those things are flown overseas. Um, and you're, you have a short, smaller weight allowance. So for, if I remember correctly, for civilians, the way it's calculated, it's 350 for the employee and for anybody 12 and up. And if you're under 12, it's 175. So we get, I lost track, I think like 875. Um, of things that they're coming to pick up and they'll fly over there. These things aren't going to be furniture. These things are going to be um, sheets, blankets, um, towels, some clothing items, um, if you have baby stuff, um, but not like large things. These are, these are things you need right away. Um, and then you get, as a civilian, everybody gets, regardless of your, your grade, you get 18,000 pounds of household goods delivered. Now, out of the 18,000 pounds comes that 875 or whatever you get from a company. But 18,000 pounds is a lot of weight. And the houses are smaller over there, so if you do have 18,000 pounds worth, you probably don't want to take it. You can store stuff um, full time, but you wouldn't be able to access it the whole time you're there. Um, so we're taking what we have. We've downsized. You know, we moved into an RV a couple years ago. We moved into a, into a smaller house. Then we moved back to the RV. So we don't have that much. We have a 10 by 30. Almost everything we own is in a 10 by 30 storage unit. So we're fine with taking what we have. So I don't claim to know it all. I don't claim to be the expert on any of this. Um, I'm just sharing with you the information that I've researched and learned and things that I've experienced um, as an active duty member. Um, if you want to follow along in our adventure with us, please subscribe to our channel.